This is a basic tutorial on main stage 101, if you like. The basics for setting up your channel strips, your patches, your layouts, organizing your concerts, and connecting your MIDI interfaces and your USB audio interfaces. Basically, everything you'll need to get set up for using main stage for shows. So, I've got my concert here. I've saved it as show number one. I usually save them as the show title. Uh, and I'd split them into Act 1 and Act 2, just so you've got smaller concert files to deal with. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Main Stage Menu, go to Sound Library and click Download All Available Sound. You might not necessarily need all of the sounds, but it's the safest way to make sure you've got everything that you need for the show. If you are low on space, you can go uh, into download essential sounds. And if you have any issues, you can download the extra sounds. So main stage works mainly off MIDI data and audio signals. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. That is the data that we're sending between our hardware, between our keyboards and our laptops, and the signals that they're using to communicate what needs to be done and how main stage is going to work. So you can see it shows you on the top of the screen here on MIDI in. If I suppress a key on the keyboard, uh, it'd actually be telling me I'm playing D3. And then the audio uh, signals are something we'll get to a bit later. So let's uh, just go through to our layout menu now. We're going to click on the keyboard. And we have it set here as um one which is uh, my interface. I do select that to all. This would be how you would see it. You're going to want to hit assign and simply press a key on the keyboard. And it will recognize your keyboard and set that keyboard as your primary keyboard. You can also select it from the drop down menu uh, if that's simpler or if, it, if you've got an issue with it assigning, that may be a better option for you. We're now also going to have to connect our audio interface. I can use Mainstage through the main headphone jack, uh, but you'll have a much better quality and it will run a lot smoother if you have a mains powered or bus powered USB audio interface. Now I've got a Scarlet Focusrite 6i6, uh, one of these here. It's just, uh, can be just used as a simple USB interface for audio output as well as it's several channels of inputs um, to record. You may not need something quite as advanced as that, uh, but you can get just a simple audio interface that just outputs two channels. So let's have a look at how we're going to set this up. So we're going to go into our Preferences menu, and in our audio output, we're going to select our USB audio interface. If it's not appearing there, you may need to just have a look for some drivers, uh, check the website and check what they say and then you should be able to get set up. Audio input, uh, you can set where you like for the time being because we're not really going to be using audio input uh, for this tutorial. So we're just heading back to the layout menu. This is our layout. This is what we're going to see when we're in perform mode. It's going to be our patch list, the sets, which we'll get to a bit later on, our buttons to choose between sets and choose between patches, our keyboard, it's going to be showing us what's being played. Pitch bend, modulation wheels, they may or may not come into play. Your sustain pedal and your volume pedal, your main output, and also your smart controls, uh, along with the name of the patch and the set that it's in. Your smart controls are basically extra controls that you can use in performance mode. Uh, so say I add a new patch, go to the patch library, instrument, Let's choose electric piano. Let's go classic electric piano. This has now changed this patch to a classic electric piano. You can see here the smart controls. So in performance mode, these controls can be edited while you're playing. To give you extra effects, extra EQs, even extra articulations with the strings and the brass instruments and they can all be mapped to your MIDI controls, to your dials and your faders uh, to make it easier to control mid-performance. 
So sometimes I'll need a layout that's a little simpler. If I only got sort of eight or nine sounds that I need, I can have this layout here, where I have individual buttons for each sound, which are then mapped to buttons on my MIDI controller. The MIDI controller I'm using at the moment is the Nectar LX88 Impact uh, here. And these buttons here are the buttons that I will use to map to these buttons for my patches. Uh, for the moment, we're just going to use this simpler layout. I'll do a video a bit later on explaining how to create the other layout. But just for now, let's just stick to the default. The next thing you're going to want to do is once you've inserted a few different patches, have some strings. Going through the browser here, selecting our instruments, selecting which one we want. Steinway. So we've got three patches here. That's more than enough. Let's go to layout. We're going to want to be able to cycle through our patches using a pedal. If you don't have a control pedal, the easiest way to do it is to map it to a key on the keyboard. So if we select this button, which is going to be us moving down patches, I'm going to go to assign again. I'm going to assign that to the second lowest key on the keyboard. And it's registered that as an A sharp minus one. Unclick assign, and we're gonna to go to this other button here, and we're gonna choose the lowest key, A minus one. Now when we're in perform mode, if we press those keys, it's gonna cycle through the patches, which is really useful. Uh, to, you know, you're not using the mouse and the keyboard of the laptop while you're trying to play. You can also assign it to a pedal. Press assign and press a control pedal, I've done here. So now when I press that pedal, it's gonna cycle through those patches. That's another way, just an easier way to get through your patches. So let's just have a look at this section a little more. So main stage files, are made up of concerts, sets, patches, channel strips, in that order. So we have our concert over the top. We have a set within that concert. So if I was to select those patches and go new set from selection, I'd name that after whatever the first song of the show is. This is a set. These are the patches within the set, and the set is within the concert. Within these patches, we have channel strips. These can be used to create layers. Uh, the more channel strips we have, the more layers of instruments we can have in one sound. Let's have a look at the different types of channel strips. We have an audio channel strip, instrument channel strip, external instrument channel strip, and an auxiliary channel strip. Now the audio channel strips we're not really going to be using, therefore inputting audio into a channel using a microphone uh, or another instrument. We don't really need that at the moment. We're looking at instrument channel strip. We're going to be using those almost all the time. And these channel strips have a virtual instrument that we are controlling with our MIDI input. External instrument channel strip, therefore sending MIDI to other devices. So say you have a hardware keyboard that you like a sound on and you want to use that along with main stage. You can have your lower keyboard sending MIDI data to the hardware keyboard and all controlled through main stage. So you're only using one keyboard to control both. We'll get into that much later on. And your auxiliary channel strips, they are strips that we can use to send audio to apply effects to. They're usually used for reverbs, which is what we've got here. We've got a few auxiliary ones here that are reverbs that are receiving us through these sends here. So just having a look at the instrument channel strip. Just having a look in a bit more detail, uh, expression. That can be used to change articulation in sounds, and a lot of presets have these built in. Settings, we can use this to set our own saved settings or uh, a stock preset. 
uh, that's installed with main stage. Gain reduction is going to come into play when we're using sounds EQ. This is going to show a little preview of the EQ that we have on the channel. At the moment it's not being used at all, but it will show up uh, if you're using EQ. We can have one in there just by double clicking. And it's going to show us an EQ there that we can configure. It's just an easy way of seeing what settings without having to open them up. MIDI effects, arpeggiator, chord trigger, we're going to come on to much later. A number of other ones that we may not necessarily use right now. Transposer and Scripter are certainly ones I've used, uh, but I haven't really come across the other ones. Input, that's where we're going to select our virtual instrument. All here, uh, these are all the ones that are installed. All for different types of instruments and different um, families of instruments and things. You can turn that off and on. If you choose the middle button, you can actually open the instrument and see what the settings are. Audio effects. So these are to apply to the, uh, the transcript after we have our virtual instrument. Uh, some of those you may be familiar with. Our send is going to send this audio to here, to these auxiliaries, before it makes its way out of the channel strip. So it's sending the signal out to the side as well as down, out of this strip. So we'll have a dry sound strip and then an affected effects sound to the auxiliary. You can mix those accordingly to what you need. Your output, so output at the moment is set to one and two. If we change depending on your interface, one, two generally seems to be what you want. Your pan, left and right, again, not really necessary in musical theater, but it's there anyway. Your decibel level, your volume and your clip levels, and your fader, and mute and solo. All things we're, we're used to. That is your instrument channel strip. So there is just a little taster of main stage. Dig into some more advanced things in the next few videos. But just to get you up to date with the basics and get yourself set up to begin working. Uh, thanks for watching.